So we're here at the service center at Unique Chrysler getting you set and ready for the winter season. But it seems every single year we have to give you reminders of what to do and what not to do. And we're with the man who is going to tell you, because we're with the parts manager here at Unique Chrysler. We're talking winter tires, Dave McLean. And why every single year do we have to stress to people that they need winter tires, Dave? Well, one of the reasons is, is when you get ice and snow on the road, it's slippery. All we have to do is actually take a walk in the snow, and you know how difficult that can be. So when you get winter tires on, the rubber compound is actually a softer rubber. It adheres more, as opposed to your all-season or uh, summer tires are a harder rubber. Okay, let me let me just even bring this one in. So this is the one Will just took off. This is an all-season? That's an all-season okay, tire. So, so Will, can you bring, bring this one over here for a sec? So what's the difference between these two? Well, you two can guys? see the difference in the tread patterns completely. Okay. There's a lot more, this is what you call a sipe. A lot more sipes. You see how I can actually flex that? Yeah. That makes it grab into the road and the ice easier, where this one doesn't. It, this is more likely to slip because it's a smoother surface. This will grab more and it'll displace the ice and water and snow. So it'll give you more traction and control while you're okay. driving. We'll toss that one on because this is an all season. You have so many people, you're probably coming in all the time saying, well, I have all season tires, I'm fine. Well, that's, that's a misnomer. When you have all season tires, that's good. But when you actually get ice and snow on the road, the all season tire is not a winter tire for ice and snow. All season could work very well in Florida. Okay. But all season, in a northern climate, where you get ice and snow, you want winter tires. Why do people wait until the last possible moment? Well, that's, that's <laughs> the thing. It hasn't snowed yet. Yeah. Some people figure you We, had, we had a little test last week where it was getting cold and there was thoughts of some snow and some northern areas got some snow. Some did, yeah. Right? But here's the other thing. So when we do get that first snowfall, obviously you'll be busy. Yes. But then there's other factors, too, that people don't realize with their cars. Well, there's other things you should check about your cars just beside your tires. You've got windshield wipers, washer fluid. Your lights are very important. Okay. And also maybe even your battery, which can be checked. Okay. So Will's putting these tires on right now. How long do winter tires normally last for? Well, winter tires, depending on how often you drive, you should be able to get at least three seasons, if not four seasons, if you have if, if you rotate them from because season that, to because season. Because that's the thing, because then they will last longer too if you're, if you're doing that, right? Because well, you, have right. This, you have your all seasons, your summers on, they will last those seasons, and then you have the winter tires that will last those seasons too. Yeah, if you have two sets of tires, because right. eventually, you're gonna wanna buy tires anyways if you have your vehicle for a while. But if you have winter tires, you're swapping them out. So to get a set of winter tires, and you're swapping them out with your uh, summers or all seasons, you've already bought that set of tires and it's gonna last longer. So instead of maybe hitting the 50,000 kilometer mark, you could be going 100,000 kilometers and you've already have your two sets of tires. Okay, so those, that's the winter tires. He mentioned a number of other things like uh, windshield washers, wipers, lights, battery. That's what we'll tackle when we come back next half hour here at Unique Chrysler in Burlington, just off of Walker's line. Will, show us how it's done. <laughs> oh, the pressure's on now. <laughs> Get her on there. Oh, yeah, there you go. Change of seasons also means the change in temperature. We tackled the winter tires last half hour back with uh, Dave McLean here at the uh, service station at Unique Chrysler. There's so many other factors, so many other things you've got to be checking, Dave. So we lifted the hood on this, uh, on well, this car one here. Of, one of the things that happens a lot of times is like, if it's not raining and the weather's good, you're never using your wipers or your washers, okay. which is very important, especially when you first get that first rain, first snow, and you go to turn them on, your wipers are kind of stuck to the windshield and they may tear, because we had a couple of months there at the end of the summer, very hot weather. Okay, let's see, okay, let's bring this down. Let's see the, let's see the wipers then. What kind of wipe, what kind of shape are these wipers in? And it's easy, you just right. lift it up. Okay. And you can see where it's been sitting on the windshield here, eh? And then the blades, you just have to check them. Because if they've been there for a while, when you go to turn them on, you get some ice on your windshield. As they start to move, they may tear. You want to make sure that doesn't happen when you really need them. Is this okay? These yep, these are blades okay? are all right. Okay. So, but, so that doesn't mean that you shouldn't check it out. So yeah. when you are driving the vehicle, you should run your wipers and clean your windshield. <laughs> there, there you go. go. Hey Okay, so then it's checking some of the fluids, like... So there you are. Your most okay. important one here is the windshield washer, indicated by this symbol here, windshield squirting. 
So you want to make sure this is topped up because there's nothing worse than being on the highway and it's getting really bad weather. You go to clean your windshield and nothing comes out of it. This is what happens because a lot of people neglect to check it. If you haven't used it for a while, you don't think about it, right. but you should always check it. Battery. Your battery. A lot of times batteries don't like heat, they don't like cold, especially they don't like cold. So if you come in for your lube oil and filter, you could actually ask if you have any concerns, could you load test the battery? Because there's nothing worse than doing your Christmas shopping and you're at the mall with a bunch of groceries. You get into the car and it'll go click, it doesn't start. Okay. So you can always check that easily. Any other fluids you should be checking? Well, you can, when you come in for oil and filter, they, they right. will check all these levels. Okay. The other important one is your uh, antifreeze. Okay. And that's easy to check just by looking in there and there's a level indicator on there. Right. But they will check it. But uh, key to be doing a walk around, especially um, as you're getting ready for the winter season, making sure all your lights are working. Right? All lights your lights. That's a, that's a very important thing because a lot of times if you have a burned out signal light on your dashboard, you notice the flasher will flash quicker on the burned out side than the other side. But if you're not using your flashers and you haven't checked this out, if you're driving down the road at night and there's a bulb burned out, and somebody's following you too close, and it's winter and you don't have winter tires on, it makes it easier to possibly have an accident if the light doesn't light up. You wanna make sure all your lights are working. It's very important, because as us, all of us drive, okay. you've probably been on the road and seen other vehicles out there with bad it lights. It sounds silly to be doing a walk around, but you gotta be doing that walk around. You should, and it's so easy to do. You get yeah. in the car, turn on your lights, you walk around it, make sure they're all working. Okay, all good tips. So winter tires is the number one, checking your, your wipers, checking your fluids. And the thing is too, if you're not checking or changing your winter tires, you're probably gonna be seeing them in the service station, changing a bumper or something like that because they bumped well, into something. Well, that's, that's, that's what happens. <laughs> right? This is, yes, collision times. It happens. Okay, so we'll continue here at Unique Chrysler. We'll go talk about uh, child safety and how to properly install a child seat and prepping them for the winter months when we return next half hour on Morning Live. Okay, so we're back here at Unique Chrysler in their showroom. We've tackled the winter maintenance stuff outside the car. Now we're moving inside. We're with Melissa from Little Squirt. Hey, Melissa. Thank you for having me. No problem. Properly installing your car seat. Yes. Every car seat is different. Every car seat is different and every vehicle is different, believe it or not. Okay. So, so, so what's this one here? This one is a Kiko 3. Okay. And we're, what you want to do first, before you start any car seat installation, you want to make sure you read your vehicle manual and your car seat manual. Okay. It's very important. So what we're going to do here for the installation is I'm going to get you so to So this compress. is too loose. This right? is way too is, loose. So you always want to make sure when you're checking the tightness for a car seat that you can't move the car seat more than an inch, front to back, side to side, more than an inch. Okay. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to get you to compress into the vehicle and we're going right. to pull the strap. Now every car seat has a different tightening mechanism. So certain car seats I know mine are all on the sides here. Exactly. But this is so one main one in the middle that tightens both in. of them. And we've attached Right. the lower anchors already and we always want to make sure that our level is correct so we want to make sure okay. here that for any rear facing seat that our level is correct so we're okay. going to take it in there so still a little too loose so we're going to really, really, really compress it. On it yep so okay. we don't want to push it too hard because you don't want to damage the integrity but that's but better. that's perfect yep so you can't move it more than an inch side to side front to back okay let's come over here because you got some great examples on the table here because this is a big thing with kids too and we're finding this because it's so cold outside you got the winter jackets on yes but your kids should not be wearing the winter jackets with the car seat. They shouldn't. So a jacket yeah. that's about this thick here, the problem with it is it, it actually won't, comp it'll start to compress if you're in a collision. So you can never get it tight enough when the child's in the jacket, in the car seat. So you always yeah. want to make sure that you don't have any extra bulk between the child's straps and any item. Okay, so, so even, what about if it's a really cold day, bringing the kid from the house to the car? Yes, absolutely. We all know as parents, an extra five minutes takes yeah. a long time. So one of the great tips is fasten your child in the car seat, and then you can just take their jacket and you can stick it on backwards. Okay. So you just stick it on backwards here, and then when the car heats up and the child is hot, they can just kick the jacket off, okay. and it's nice and safe. Uh, what's that one? This jacket here, so this one is a compressible down jacket. So this jacket here is actually car seat safe. So it's a jacket that we can compress in our hands, so it doesn't add any extra bulk. So when we're do talking about winter safety, we always want to say thin layers. So you can see here, our little guy here, he's got a fleece on. I like this little guy. He's, got, fan. Yeah, he's a Leafs fan, Good exactly, choice, go Leafs no? go. Um, so he's got a t-shirt here, and then he could also actually wear a thin, Thin, compressible down jacket. Okay. What about uh, babies? So babies here, they're a little bit easier because we're typically getting them ready in the house. So this baby here, we've got a, a little onesie on. It's got a uh, long sleeve onesie underneath as well. And then we've got this shower cap style um, car seat cover. So it just goes over top. The ones that are this here. This is what we had. We had this. 
Yeah, so this is very deceiving because you can actually see it looks like it's safe for the car seat because it's got the slots where the harness straps can go through. But unfortunately, it's a little deceiving because then you're adding bulk again between the baby and the fabric here. So because you're never getting- Because there's nothing in between here. That's the, exactly. that's the actual that's the, car seat. That is okay? the car seat. So you never want to have, other than a thin layer between the, the, the baby and any extra So you could be padding. putting stuff on top of them. Absolutely. A blanket safe in the car seat for the baby. And again, you can take it off when the car heats Where up. Where can you get this stuff? Um, this stuff's available at any of your local baby stores. Okay. And you can order them online as right. well. Oh, we're on the brief. There you go. <laughs> He's okay. Okay, so then let's come on back over here right. and we'll snap this guy or guest guy yeah, guy in. And the last thing is rear facing is until how old? Uh, rear facing, so as a tech, we like to say minimum age two, but as best practice, we like to max out the limits on the seat, so age three or four. Age three or four, okay, all great tips from uh, Little Squirts. We'll be back with one more here at Unique Chrysler, getting you ready for the winter season on Morning Live. How you doing, buddy? You are okay? Yeah, because then you can get Oh, listen to that big purr. Tim, can you please shut the truck off? It's in the showroom. Shutting it off, Mike. You can't. Yeah, but, but there's something about like a guy in his truck. What am I sitting in right now, by the way? What is this? The 2018 Sport Ram. Beautiful truck. My dad, my dad's gonna love this because he has a Ram. He, well, doesn't, he doesn't let me drive it, so that's why that's why I saw an opportunity here. Awesome, so we should get you into one <laughs> oh, today. There you go, always a salesman. We, this we is General Manager Mike Caravelli here at uh, Unique Chrysler. Uh, good to see you, Mike. Nice to see you. For anybody that doesn't know Carnation to Unique Chrysler, what is Carnation? It is our dealer group that owns 10 stores in total, and we have all brands. We have Unique Chrysler, a Ford store, Nissan store, Kia store. All throughout the region? Yes. Okay. And we also have Carnation Direct on the highway here. Yeah, that you, that you, can't, that you that can't miss when you're, uh, when you you're driving on the... You can't miss it. With, uh, you know, at at any, any given time, we have 600 pre-owned vehicles there to choose from. You guys are doing a number of things like uh, Coat Drive. Yes, we are. Take us through the Coat Drive that's actually ending this weekend. It, yes, it ends. And on Monday, we'll, we will be delivering all the coats from all our dealerships. We pick a vehicle or two per store, and we fill them up with coats. And then on Monday, we'll deliver them to people in need. So these are these are used jackets that people don't need anymore? Yes. Instead of, like, uh, they can be donating them to you? Yes. Okay. And we fill them up every year. Uh, and then the good part is, is starting next week, until December 20th, we start the toy drive for McMaster Sick Kids. How many years have you guys been doing that for now? We do uh, the toy drive. We've been doing for five years now. Have you? Okay, so so take us through that one because that goes until November. The, sorry, December 20th. December 20th. We will have a bunch of vehicles filled up, and then once they're all filled up with toys, we will all drive them down to McMaster Kids and donate it to all the kids in need. Oh, that's really yes. cool. Yes, because we've got to walk over here because there is a, a special presentation that we have. Uh, with Carnation and Unique Chrysler and the Canadian Cancer Society, I want to introduce uh, Shelly from uh, the Canadian Cancer Society. And uh, Mike, you want to bring up the check? And take yes. us through what exactly this is. So what is this, Mike? So this is a donation um, for the, the Canadian Cancer Society that we donate every year. So how many, so all the dealerships have been involved in this? Yes, we all participate and we, we do what we can to help out. Right on. So what does this mean for you, Shelley? And where does this $5,000 go exactly? Well, Carnation specifically has designated these funds to breast cancer research in the month of October, which is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, so that money will go directly to a researcher who's working on a project right now to reduce the risk of breast cancer. Why, why are donations like this so crucial to you guys? Well, these are important because this has zero overhead for us at the society. So there's no labor uh, on our part. There's no overhead at all. It's $5,000. It's going straight to the researcher. Sure. Right on. And how did the month of the Breast Cancer Awareness Month go? It was fantastic. It was our first uh, year that since we merged with the Canadian Breast Cancer Foundation. Right so on. it was busy. So congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations to you, Mike. And uh, Thank thanks, you very thanks much. for having us. Thanks for having us Thank today you. here at uh, Unique Chrysler, getting you guys set and ready for the winter driving season. Is he looking? I'm going to go back and start the truck. You can't start the truck in the showroom. <laughs> Let's not get here, you Okay, hand the keys over. Let's finance it and then after we'll give you the keys on delivery. Thank you very much.